Well folks, welcome back to another video. I have come to this lake right here behind me in hopes of doing some fly fishing. But as you can clearly see, the entire lake is capped with ice, which is kind of odd because I was here about a week ago, there was no ice, it was all open water, but it has been cold the past couple nights and I guess it was enough to just totally cap this. So it doesn't look like we're gonna be doing any fly fishing today, but I was prepared and I brought my ice fishing stuff as well. So now it's just a matter of seeing if this is safe ice. It looks pretty solid. I mean, it really does. There's a crack. Oh, it's holding my weight. It's holding my weight, it's cracking. Oh, let's try over here by the boat ramp. Oh yeah, <laughs> it'll crack if you kick it hard enough. I don't know, seems pretty safe. But you also gotta keep in mind, the shoreline is generally the most unsafe ice. The further out in the middle you get, the ice is usually a little thicker and safer. I think we're good. This is gonna be so funny if I fall through today. All right. Oh, it's cracking. She's cracking. If I can just get to that dock out there, I'll at least have a lifeline. Boom. Nice. Cool. That is not thick at all. That is not thick. Holy cow. That is like three inches tops, two and a half. Let's see. Dude, that's like, yeah, it's about three inches. They say that four inches is kind of the minimum, but you can obviously get away on a little thinner ice. All right, now let's check the depth. I'm just gonna drop this jig down until it hits bottom. I don't think it's gonna be very deep at all. Oh, that's actually deeper than I thought. So we got about, we got about seven, eight feet of water. Boom, that is perfect. I'm gonna drill another hole. I'm just gonna tie on one of these little green power bait tube jigs. And then I'm just gonna tip it with a mealworm. I'm gonna have this rod just dead stick in this hole, like a foot off the bottom. All right, now we just wait for the bite. And then I'm gonna set this rod up with some power bait. I've already just got a little jig head. And then I got some garlic scented green power bait. This was working well for me the other day. By the way, the target species we're going for, obviously just trout. Um, rainbows, mainly. There's a lot of rainbows in here. There's quite a few tiger trout. There's a bite. No way. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Fish on. Fish on. What the heck? <laughs> Fish already. It's been down there for a minute. Right as I was explaining, we're going for rainbow trout, obviously. And then there's a good handful of tiger trout and then a handful of cutthroat as well. There we go, got the first fish of the day on the mealworm. Got the skunk out of the boat. See you later. Dude, that is crazy. I did not expect to get a fish that early. I'll drop that right back down. Oh, my reels are already frozen. That's actually one positive. It's cold, but that means that the ice is only gonna get thicker. If it was gonna be like 40 degrees today, I'd probably not be out here because by the time I got done, the shorelines would probably be open water and I'd be stranded. All right, folks, well, got both my rods set up. Already caught one fish. Hopefully that wasn't just one skinny little trout roaming aimlessly under the dock. So I just hope that there's some decent fish roaming the shoreline and that they're all not stacked up in the middle. Oh, missed one. I just missed one, guys, on the power bait rod. I was actually just about to go drill another hole out a little bit further to where it's maybe a little bit deeper. 
and then I got another bite. Nice. I'm still gonna drill another hole because I just I don't want to just sit in one spot. I want to kind of just figure out where these fish are. That is so thin. Here's a little ice safety tip of the day for you. Especially when you're ice fishing on ice this thin, which it's not crazy thin, I'll be all right, but it's not a bad idea to have a pair of these little spikes. So if you do fall through, you can use these to claw your way back to safety. So I just keep these around my neck and if anything happens, there's a bite, there's a bite, there's a bite. There he is, there he is. Fish on, <laughs> look at that thing. Holy cow, I mean, it's a fish. <laughs> this thing is tiny and super skinny. Look at that. That is a paper thin trout. Goodness, you are not looking too good, buddy. But nonetheless, it's a fish. Pop this guy back. There he goes. I did not mention that I want to do a catch and cook today. In fact, it's another chip video. We're going to add to the chip series, but I cannot be cooking a fish like that. I'd get almost no meat off of them, especially if I want to fillet them. So I'm going to need a big fat tiger trout or a big rainbow. Hooked up. What do we got here? Oh, another little squeaky rainbow. <laughs> another one of these. Well, get them back. <laughs> See ya. There we go. Fish on. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> That's not a bad one. You know what, folks? We're going to keep this guy. Look at that. Yep, rainbow, not a cutthroat. Nice. That's not a bad fish. So there are some decent ones swimming around down there. He's gonna taste good the way we're gonna cook him. Cool. I'm gonna kill him real quick. Fish on. That's another good one. I mean, good one meaning like 12 incher. Rainbow, not our tiger trout or cutthroat. Definitely came straight from a hatchery. But I'll take it. We'll let him go. I've been here about an hour and a half now. And I only got two bites and that one little fish over at the docks at the beginning. Other than that, I'll be getting way more action the farther out I go. There he is. Oh, oh, missed him. Guys, I saw a fish swim right below the hole. There he is again. Oh, shoot. He's right below the hole. Got him. Got him. <laughs> there he is. That's so funny. I lifted it up. I lifted my jig up and literally this guy swims two inches below the hole. I can see him clear as day. And I just kept dropping it back down there and he didn't stop till he had it. Skinny little bow. Fish on. On the drop. <laughs> oh, <laughs> goodness. Oh, sorry about that, buddy. I'll just kick him back there. Ah, he took my mealworm, what the heck. All right guys, so I'm actually gonna fillet this trout right now. Because for the recipe I'm doing, I actually wanna let it marinate for at least a couple hours before we actually cook it. And I'll show you guys that in a sec, but let's get this fish all filleted up. So his meat is not pink, because uh, I'm sure this guy came from a hatchery not too long ago. Oh, there's one fillet. Oh, hold on. That rod's getting a bite. That rod's getting a bite. It did get a bite. Let's see if he's still on there. Yep, he's still on there. Got him. <laughs> this is what interrupted me, really. About an eight incher. Skinny. See ya. That one's getting a bite too. <laughs> what the heck? What the heck? Fish on. What the heck? Hey! That's another good rainbow. Whew! That's a pretty fish. Look at that pink line on him. Look at that guy. Nice, I'll take it. That's a little bit better. Send him back down the hole. 
There we go. Two nice little rainbow trout fillets. I actually think these are gonna taste pretty good. Like I said, we're gonna be doing another chip video today with Lay's Sweet Southern Heat Barbecue Chips. But if you've been watching the past couple uh, catch and cook videos where I've done this, I've kind of had trouble keeping the flavor of the chip after I cook it. So today, I'm gonna try something that I think is gonna work. I have here some Grillmates Barbecue Rub. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some of this rub in this Ziploc bag, put the fillets in there, and then just let them sit, marinate for like two hours so they can really absorb that barbecue flavor. And then we're gonna rinse them off because that'd be way too overpowering and then bread them with the chip crumbs. So I'll take some of this in the bag. That's probably good. And we'll take our fillets and drop them in there. And then I'm just gonna let them sit in this bag for like two hours, let them absorb that flavor and then we'll get cooking. Oh, there's one. Oh, 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 he's right below the ice. Come on. There he is. Oh, missed him. Missed him, come on. There he is. There he is. Dude, there are so many of these things down there. I'm not even tipping my jig with anything. No bait, no, no power bait, no mealworm. I'm just bouncing it up and down and they're just coming out of nowhere. <laughs> this rod just got bit. There he is, there he is. Fish on. Fish on. Sweet! Another bow. What are you doing, buddy? All right, we'll get you back. There you go. Oh, there he is. There he is. Hey! I've honestly lost track of how many fish I've caught at this point. I'm definitely over like 15, so probably not gonna show them all in video because most of them are just like this. But at least we're getting action. Catch yeah, about 15. Do you have your fishing license? Yeah. All right, you're good, man. Sweet, That's thank cool. you. Cool, have fun. All right, folks, just got off the ice. I fished for probably five hours and caught I don't even know how many little rainbows. It was just ridiculous. I'm obviously not gonna put them all in the video because it'd be like an hour long. Yeah, I don't know if you guys realized, a fishing game cop actually pulled up too and checked our licenses. So that was cool. But anyway, now it's time to cook a little dinner. I got those trout fillets and I found a nice little spot in the trees and I'm gonna be cooking on this rock that's kind of like a table. So here's the fillets from our rainbow trout. I actually rinsed them off about two hours ago but they were sitting in that barbecue rub for a good two hours. And like I said, breading them in some Lay's Southern Heat barbecue. All right, so here's the little Ziploc bag that had that uh, barbecue rub in it, but I dumped the rub out and I'm just gonna add some chips. Ooh. There we go. Seal it up and we'll start crushing. All right, now we'll get our stove going. All right, now I'll take this bag, crack an egg. There we go. Now we got our fillets. I mean, look at that. That's just bright orange. This is gonna taste. It's actually going to have quite a bit of flavor, I feel like. There we go. Take the fish, drop it in the chips. All right, let's see what we're working with here. There's one. There's two. I don't think I crushed those chips up quite enough. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some, sprinkle them on, just like that. And then I'm just gonna pack them in. Try to make them stick to the filet. All right, that looks pretty good. <laughs> this is gonna be some crunchy fish. All right. Oh yeah, that oil's hot enough. Here we go. First fillet going in. 
Oh my goodness. And the second fillet. Perfect. We're gonna go ahead and give them a flip here with my bass spatula. Thought you guys would appreciate that. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is gonna be good. I'm excited to try this. This whole breading fish and chips is really fun to do. All right. Let the oil drip off. Boom. Add a few more chips to the side. And there we go, guys. Look at that. That looks beautiful. So I've got high hopes for this. Those fillets were marinating in that barbecue seasoning for two hours. So if they don't taste like barbecue, there's something wrong. And this is a stocked rainbow. And usually those stocked rainbows right out of the hatchery, they don't taste that great. We will see. There's a little bite. Super crunchy. Guys, that is good. I'm not lying. That has a really good flavor. Not super overpowering. It is kind of sweet. That uh, Grillmates rub that it was marinating in has kind of a sweet flavor. It's a little bit too sweet for me. That fish isn't too bad either. If you guys want to try this recipe at home, but I would recommend letting them sit, marinate in like some kind of seasoning for an hour or two. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one.